Hey everyone, Ripley Sellers with Bob's Watches. I'm here with Justin in the studio for another episode of Vintage of the Week, where we highlight one incredible vintage watch and share it with you. And as always, whatever we're talking about is available on the site for purchase, so if you like what you see, head on over and add it to your collection. All right, we got a great one. I know you like the one we were Favorite. talking about today. Favorite yes. Rolex. Um, before we jump into it, let's do the wrist check real quick. I'm wearing my Omega Speedmaster. Ah, uh, very nice. Uh, has light sandwich style, so you got yeah. the acrylic crystal in the front, and you've got the sapphire crystal in the capes back. So Love it. Wish they still made this one, but yeah. uh, you know, happy to have it. Yeah. What about you? Beautiful watch. Uh, I'm going simple, clean. I'm going uh, oh, Rolex Datejust too, white dial. Um, I like the smooth bezel on this one. Uh, to me, it's just. Really clean and simple, and uh, it kind of goes with everything. So yeah, I yeah, love I it. I know people dog the date just too, saying it kind of lost its proportions. But in the all steel smooth bezel mm -hmm. execution, I think it kind of works to kind of have that blockier sport. It does. Aesthetic. It's yeah. it's a definitely a chunkier guy, but um, you know I don't have tiny wrists. I think it fits well, and I think it looks sharp. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. White dial's classic. All right. Well, jump Let's it get in. Oh, right into this. I mean, it's my favorite Rolex. Yes. So we're talking about the. Rolex Explorer Two. Sixteen fifty five. First so one. The very first yeah. Explorer Two, and this is the first version of that one. So came out in 71, they produced mm -hmm. it all the way up until about 84 before they rolled out the uh, five digit. So it's the only four digit. It's the only one with this funky dial. It's, you know, it's the only one with an acrylic crystal, the only one that doesn't have a jumping hour hand. Right. Such a unique watch, doesn't look like anything else in Rolex's catalog yeah. whatsoever. And this example is an early execution of it. So this one I believe is 1974. Mm -hmm. And y if you look at the seconds hand right here, it doesn't have a luminous pip on it. Right. So when they first came out with these, it's got the straight hands, kind of that floating aesthetic, but mm -hmm. there's no luminous pip, it's just that straight hand example. Right. Newer examples have the luminous pip added Partially, partially way down the second hand. Yeah, right? it'll yeah. look like a regular Rolex exactly. sports watch. Yeah. I mean, insofar as this can look like a regular Rolex sports yeah. watch, I mean, it's really not like any other Explorer Two. It's not a GMT watch because the cause the two hour hands are coupled. Right. Unlike this all subsequent it's that pseudo GMT. It's a twenty four hour indicator. Yes. They made it for spelunkers operating in total darkness. That big bright orange hand was simply meant to be an AM PM indicator so that they could read it against the dial. And if you look at the offset markers. Mm -hmm. The inner ones are for the 12 hour, and when you look at them all together, that's for the 24 hour right. format. It makes a ton of sense if you're living in total darkness. Sure. For the average person above yeah. ground, and they can see the sunlight, know if it's AM, PM. Right. Uh, it can be kind of hard to read, no. but that's why I love it. I, I love it too. Uh, it's not, you know, if you're looking for the GMT complication, you'll be disappointed, but for me, I don't really knock at any points for that. I love the fact that it's so unique and uh, I don't really miss the GMT function. I like the look of it. I like that it, you know, has the reminiscence of the GMT with, you know, the extra hand and, you know, the markings on the bezel. Um, and I just think it's really unique and, and really cool. Yeah, for me, why I love it, obviously the case shape, you know, 39 mil, super versatile, love the steel bezel, mm -hmm. very, very tool like. It's probably along with side the Sea Dweller, one of Rolex's most purpose built sports watches. Right. Spelunking and, you know, and saturation diving. Yeah. Two things very people specific. don't do. Yeah. <laughs> and then, but like, unlike the current one where they kind of brought back the orange hand, it has the regular Rolex sport dial, mm -hmm. it's got the Mercedes hands, it looks like a Rolex sports watch. This doesn't look like anything else they've ever made. Um, and it looks almost futuristic, you know, at the time, but yes. obviously now it looks very vintage. Right. But, I, you know, I always say it looks like something out of the Jetsons with that kind of the way the dial and the, like the, the how the hands seem to float uh -huh. because they're finished black near the center. I love that. Um, that's one thing I was going to mention about this. We we're talking about, uh, you know, the straight seconds hand, which is, is really cool. Uh, to me, I like them both. I don't know that I like one better than the other. One of them may be more collectible or, or whatever. But just personally, I think they both look great. But what I do really like is just the hand set as a whole. First off, I love that big orange hand. I mean, that... That hits it for me. I mean, I'm a fan of orange and just, you know, the uniqueness on this one and the fact that it's just so big and out there, like, you know exactly what that hand came from. You don't even need to see it on the watch. Um, but aside from that, we have the minute and hour hands. Rolex doesn't have these hands on any other watch. Mm -hmm. It's only this watch. And like you said, they're really interesting the way they're, it's, you know, it's the solid loom and then they're cut off with like the black near the center, so they have that kind of floating appearance. It's just such a unique look, and um, you know, it's one of my favorite things about this watch. Yeah, I absolutely love it, and keep in mind at the time, so early 70s, this wasn't, this wasn't, tool watches weren't like the thing everyone was wearing. Whoever bought this one probably planned to use it outdoors, and I think this particular example, the case back engraving, tells an interesting story. So, 
you know, flipping it over, first of all, nice folded link bracelet, you know, original bracelet. So often these got replaced over the years or yeah. the later examples came on something more like, you know, the standard mm -hmm. folded link. But when you look at it, it's got the owner's name and blood type on the case back. So Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, so you gotta figure at what point was someone, this isn't, you know, a phone number if lost or what have you. This is something where they needed to know the blood type, whether they're outdoor adventuring and in case they got hurt and ended up in a hospital in a foreign city, or if it was a military personnel and you know, something like right. that. You gotta wonder like what what did this watch do before it ended up in our possession? Yeah. <laughs> um, clearly it was something outdoor and active and as Rolex is one of their most purposeful tool watches, that makes sense. Yeah, and I love that. I mean, again, we're talking one of their most purpose built tool watches, um, and nothing says that more than engraving your blood type on the back <laughs> of it in case of an emergency, right? So I love that. To me, it just adds to the history. And, you know, I love the history on these old watches and the stories that goes with them are, you know, as much a part of the package as the actual watch itself for me. So to see that detail on there and, you know, to kind of imagine, uh, you know, the situation it was put on there and, and, you know, the motivation behind it, it's just so cool. It just adds so much to the watch. Yeah, and it, it, even though it's lived a life, it's in really clean shape. It is in really good shape. Um, Handset and dial original, the only service part is the 24-hour hand on it. It's, it's a service hand, so it glows, but also I think that's kind of a double-edged sword. Would it have been nice to be all original? Sure, but it's so bright orange, it looks so good. Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing. Uh, like you said, it's nice to have it all original, um, but I think it looks fantastic. <laughs> yeah, well, none of the original ones from the early 70s would be this dark, right. even if they were kept in total darkness, just the paint would right. age just itself. The degradation this is just time. so bright. It looks yeah. great against the matte black dial, and the, uh, everything else is just the slight amount of patina uh -huh. that kind of offsets the how saturated yeah. that orange is. Yeah, so I actually, uh, that doesn't really bother me so much. I would absolutely take this one and wear it every single day. Well, it's my favorite Rolex, and I always say, like, if I ever got one, I'd almost want it to have all service parts, so mm -hmm. I wouldn't, it wouldn't be such a you know an asset, and right. I could just wear it carefree. But yeah. you know, for the collector, and you want the straight hand, oh, this is a great example. And on top of that, you know, this is one of those watches that just seems to keep gaining momentum. I remember when I first became aware of it, it was relatively affordable, and it's just now reached that point where it's kind of unattainable, but it isn't. It's not like you can go buy a house with, with what yes, one of these costs. Yeah, it's not there yet. We'll yet. see. I yeah. mean, you know, things are changing quick in the vintage Rolex <laughs> yeah. market. Um, this one also, uh, it's one that comes with a nickname, right? This is called the Steve McQueen. We didn't talk about that so much. That's because Steve McQueen wore this watch every day, all the time. Never wore it. Never, never wore seen it. Okay. wore it. No photo of him wearing it. Nothing whatsoever. He, in his real life, wore a no date sub. And, you know, that's the one that you can see in countless photos. Um, you know, rumor has it that Rolex had, you know, used his face alongside an ad of this watch back in the day. Um, but even that ad is one of those things you can't find it archived right. online. So whether or not it originated from a Rolex ad or mm -hmm. something that came along later and stuck it because the king of cool helped right. sell an overlooked watch. Yeah. Who knows? But yeah, it's kind of interesting. Even though it's called the Steve McQueen, no one, yeah. no one has ever seen a photo of him wearing it or even pictured it in is, the same photo as it. It's a very curious nickname. Um, but I like it. Uh, I think it's cool. Um, and it's it's very well known as the Steve McQueen. You know, when people talk about the Steve McQueen Rolex, uh, you know exactly that they are talking about the 1655. Absolutely. And it's also like, it's the only matte dial explorer yes. too. You, you know, it came out after the gilt dial era in 71, and by the time they phased it out in the mid 80s, the subsequent model, even the black dial version, you have applied white gold markers, Mercedes handset, very different watch, sapphire crystal. It's so unique that I'm surprised prices aren't higher, but again, I think so much of the Explorer 2's history mm -hmm. has been overlooked. The vintage market's probably a little bit behind the sub, the Daytona, you know, some of those you know, bigger name icons. Yeah, we've looked at other vintage watches. Um, we looked at one before, uh, that UFO watch, and we kind of talked the same thing. They're actually a lot rarer than a lot of these mm -hmm. really expensive pieces, but they're often overlooked. Um, and, you know, there's speculation on the, the market will catch up and kind of catch on to these things. Um, this is one that I can confidently say that will happen to this. This will be one of those pieces, right? Um, it's just not quite there yet, even though, like you said, it's expensive. It's not, uh, you know, it's not completely overlooked. It's just not at that, like, upper top unattainable tier, but I really feel like this is one that will end up well, there. I'm kicking myself for not buying one when I had a chance. I passed on one for under 10 grand way back in the day. Yeah. And, oh, I, I, it's my favorite Rolex, right. modern or vintage. Would kill to have that now, yeah. but it's more, you know, it's yeah. multiples of that. So right. it's, you know, it's 
ten grand watch right? and a thirty grand watch are two very different things. <laughs> well, lucky for you, this one is actually for sale. It's on our site, right? Um, so here's your chance. You just might be able to pick this. I have a feeling one. someone's going to beat me to the punch on this one, but it's a beautiful watch. You really don't see too many of the straight hand, uh, second hand examples at all. It's a nice and touch. And honestly, yeah, it's got the service twenty four hour hand, but from an aesthetic point of view, how punchy it looks. Uh, I love it. Yeah. yeah, it's hard to be mad about it. It, it, it is hard, hard to be mad, mad about, about it. it. It's gorgeous. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode of Vintage of the Week. Uh, obviously, this is my favorite Rolex, modern or vintage, but tell us in the comments what you think about, you know, kind of the quirky 1655 Rolex Explorer 2, and whether you'd rather have this vintage one or one of the new versions. And remember, it is available for purchase, so if you like this example, head on over to the site, pick it up, and add it to your collection. Well, that about wraps it up for this 1655. Be sure to stay tuned to see which watch we highlight next week. And until then, be well.